let's talk about Reggie Wright Jr., Reggie Wright Sr. Um, these guys are pure evil, and this stuff's been going on for a long time. Uh, former Mayor Omar Bradley, and if you want to read about him, you can look for an article called Where's the Hope? And in all of this investigation, we've seen carnage. We've seen a pile of corpses. Uh, they were dropping off corpses. Uh, you know, gangs were dropping off corpses in the city of Compton in the cemetery. And a lot of those murders trace back to, in one way or another, the current rights that are charged now with drug trafficking. And these guys are uh, starting to try and deal. They're trying to figure out what they can give up to get their freedom. And we all need to make sure that that does not happen. Because, you know, uh, there's so many people that breathe easier knowing that these guys are in prison now or in jail, that they're pending, that there are charges. And so here we are, we need to make sure that everybody knows all of the things these guys are responsible for. Kevin Hackey in his uh, statement to LAPD said that Reggie was known to rob the uh, inmates when he was a jailer. It's pretty common knowledge too, uh, according to Kevin Hackey, that these guys were robbing drug dealers. There's the Compton Police Corruption Report, which there'll be links in the notes where you can click on and you can see the Compton Police Corruption Report, which was triggered by a gun that flowed through death row records and that shot Officer Brian Watt. And Reggie Wright Jr. and Sr. were both deposed over how that gun got into the hands of a killer when it was supposed to be in the Compton Police Evidence Locker. There were all the guns that went to the gun shop and those all flowed through the Compton Police Evidence Locker. There was a 40-foot truck that pulled up that had to, it took lots of people and it took lots of time to get all those guns out of the gun shop that it flowed through the Compton Police Evidence Locker. There were uh, 180 kilos of cocaine that went missing in the Compton Evidence Locker, Compton Police Evidence Locker. And there was a report, the Compton Police Corruption Report, where it was discovered that all of these cops were corrupt. And so this corruption, it, it doesn't start in 2013 when the investigation started. It wasn't 2014. This has been going on since the late 80s. And so we had a chance as a society to rid ourselves of the rights and their drug cartel back in the 90s, in the late 90s, when the Compton Police Corruption Report was written. There was a loophole, and that loophole was whenever a DA case was rejected, that case would then seem to lose track of the evidence, and that evidence would be resold onto the streets by the corrupt Compton Police Department. And police chief Ori Taylor was suspended. There were kilos of cocaine that were found in his personal locker. And instead of being indicted, what happens to him? He becomes the police chief of the Compton School Police. And what happens to all of the corrupt Compton police officers? They get absorbed into the sheriffs and the go along to get along gang continues. And so here we see this whole thing could have been eradicated. It could have been stopped. These guys could have been indicted years ago. And all of this poison that's been going out on the streets could have been stopped. But why didn't it get stopped? Because the corrupt DA's office 
was pissed off at at Omar Bradley for shutting down their money trail. They were getting money from the drugs that they were rejecting the cases. And so what did they do? The corrupt DA's office that refused to prosecute the corrupt Compton police started going after Omar Bradley. And they've continued to go after him for the last 17, 18 years. And now this this uh, case is going to go to trial starting Thursday. And it's going to happen in light of the fact that Reggie Wright Jr., Reggie Wright Sr. have been arrested. And there's a lot of people inside of LAPD, corrupt cops, and corrupt cops inside of the sheriffs that are now starting to fear uh, what Reggie Wright Jr. and Reggie Wright Sr. are trying to give up in order to get into the witness protection program. What is it that they can possibly say? Who are they going to give up? How high up does it go? Well, here we have Percy Paradin, who was Reggie Wright Sr.'s partner. You have Eric Paradin, who was Reggie Wright Jr.'s partner. You have Greg Kading, who was constantly covering for Reggie Wright Jr. In his book, and you'll see right after this, there's a there's a whole quote about how maligned Reggie Wright Jr. is by R- Greg Kading in his book. And so we see they had a chance to uproot this corruption back in the day, and instead of doing it, for some reason, they chose not to uproot the corruption. Why? Was it because they were getting paid? Was it because the money was flowing into politics? Was it because they were covering for other types of corruption? We're going to find out. This is going to potentially lead to hundreds and hundreds of arrests, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. And I think that the current administration wants to get rid of the poison that's on the streets of America, finally. Finally, somebody wants to stand up to it. And I think it's the, the new uh, Justice Department that wants to stand up to corruption wherever it exists and start to get these drugs off the streets of America. And I think finally we've got uh, FBI, ATF, what have you, that really do want to see America uh, purged from these drugs and from the influence that corruption has in our economy. And uh, it's an exciting day. Uh, A few things I'd like to talk about. Reggie Wright Jr., according to Kevin Hackey, he calls him a Bobby Finch, a uh, Compton School police officer, is murdered. Kevin Hackey finds out about it a minute or two after the murder happens. And he calls Reggie Wright and says, hey, uh, Bobby Finch just got clipped. And, of course, Reggie says, oh, I already know all about that. And he goes, what do you mean? How could you know all about it? This just happened two, three minutes ago. And Reggie goes, no, I already know about it. How does he know about it so quickly? One other story. There is a dead ringer for uh, Omar Bradley, Mayor Omar Bradley. It's the principal of Linwood High School. And he's getting off the freeway in a similar vehicle, what have you. And he gets clipped. He gets killed. And uh, Reggie Wright Jr. calls Omar Bradley right at the time it happened. Omar Bradley answers and he said, you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. He goes, oh, I'll have to call you back. And he was calling to check and see if they actually were able to orchestrate the hit. And instead of getting Omar Bradley, they get his lookalike, his doppelganger, somebody who looks just like him. And Reggie Wright Jr. calls a minute or two later. Uh, One more story is the Russell Poole story. Russell Poole dies. And put it in perspective, Russell Poole is the whistleblower that gave us the Rampart scandal. He's going to the sheriffs to talk about sheriff corruption. He's got a picture of Reggie Wright Sr. and Reggie Wright Jr. at the MGM. 
He's also got information about the shooters that were led into the club by an off-duty sheriff at the time that Suge Knight was targeted and Reggie uh, Wright Jr. releases a YouTube interview gloating about Russell Poole's death two hours after. And when you start walking that back, you start to say, okay, you know, there's an hour to do the interview, and then you got rendering, and you got processing, and then we got to upload. That means he started doing that interview within minutes of Russell Poole having died. And it seemed like Reggie Wright Jr. knew all the salient details of that meeting that had happened. And I've always wondered how it happened. Well, we uncovered a sheriff's source who told us that Reggie Wright Jr. was in that meeting with Russell Poole. Now, I haven't been able to verify that with anybody else, but I did ask uh, Jim McDonald, Sheriff Jim McDonald, to tell me who was in the meeting, and I was shut down. I was told that I could not know who was in that meeting. What was so sensitive that I could not know what was in that, who was in that meeting? But what we do know is we know that they tried to bring back the corrupt Compton Police Department. They were going to shut down the sheriffs. They went out, they bought radios, they bought cars. And where did they store those radios and cars? They stored them at the Long Beach Police Department when Sheriff Jim McDonald was the police chief. And I'm not saying that uh, Jim McDonald did anything wrong. I'm just saying it is coincidental that they stored him there. And Russell Poole believed in Jim McDonald. He believed that Jim McDonald was a good man. That's why he went to that meeting. I talked to him about it and I said, Russell, you don't need to go to this meeting. And he said, I do not want to disappoint Jim McDonald. And because they had worked together before, previously at LAPD. And so we start to see that uh, Russell Poole uh, died in that meeting, and it's very suspicious. We can't know the identities of who was in that meeting. Uh, I asked for it. I was shut down. I was refused. And now we have an opportunity to put these guys away for good. We need to make sure that everybody that's involved in this prosecution knows everything that these guys have done, all the shenanigans. We need to, to let him know that, uh, that uh, Reggie Wright Jr. has been in touch with Suge Knight while he's been in jail. We need to let him know that there are lots of things that have gone on over the years, including Reggie Wright Jr. being a suspect in both Tupac's and Biggie's murder, and that he's been being covered for by Darren Dupree, a corrupt cop in LAPD, who is the source of the leak of the confession letter. And Greg Kading admitted that that's exactly how that went down. And what happened when there was an internal affairs uh, report that was filed or a complaint that was filed and there was an investigation into the leak of the confession letter? The LAPD glossed over it and said, nothing to see here, move along. So we know that right now, they must really all be very worried about what's going on in Tennessee, in Chicago, wherever these guys are, whatever they're talking about, the proffer deal that's probably and probably not going to be recorded. Greg Kading recorded Keefe D's proffer deal or had it recorded and he put it out for the world, violated Keefe D's civil rights. These are dirty, bad cops. And they all hang out together, and it's time to uproot this corruption once and for all. And we need the crowd to now tell us everything that needs to be sent to these investigators that are investigating this crime. We need all of the shenanigans that these guys have pulled. We need to know about murders that they're good for. We need to know everything we can know about both of these guys because they need to be put away forever. And it's time. It's time to uproot the corruption. It's time to uproot 
what has gone on over these years. The DA's office had the Compton Police corruption report. They had every opportunity to put these guys away uh, 18, 20 years ago, and they didn't do it. Why? And why are they going after Omar Bradley? It's not right. We need to voice ourselves. The crowd needs to get involved in this. And we need to let these prosecutors know that they cannot cut a deal with these guys. No deals. Okay? Let them give you all the information, but cut no deals with them. Do not let stone cold murderers back out on the streets. There's too many things, the Buntry, the Heron, all of these murders that have happened. We need to make sure that these guys stand trial and at least uh, go down for the drug trafficking. We may not be able to get them on the murders, but we know there's so many murders that uh, have surrounded these two cases. We also know that the city of Compton has been basically under siege with the faction that aligned with Suge against the faction that aligned with Reggie Wright Jr. And we got to put an end to all this carnage. Where is the hope? I'll tell you where I see the hope. The people who have survived this, the people that can speak to the kids. If Suge Knight gets out of jail, gets out of prison, gets out of a prison sentence, then maybe he, there can be some hope with him working with kids and telling kids and, and counseling them not to do some of the things he's done. Amar Bradley, that's where I see the hope. A good man who's been maligned and he's continuing to be maligned by the district attorney's office because he cut off corrupt people's money that they were getting by kicking cases. That was a loophole and it was coming through the DA's office. What's going to happen to me? I don't care. It's time to stand for something. This is America. We have freedom. We have freedom of speech. We can say what we want to say. None of us are without sin. But look at what's going on in our country. The corruption has to stop somewhere. There's no more go along to get along because go along to get along is not working. It's not working. Our system is breaking down because there are no more laws. It's buddy, buddy. It's wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We take a look the other way when there's somebody doing something really bad. And then somebody who makes a mistake or whatever, we can pursue them for 17 years. We can pursue them until uh, there's they do a three-year prison stint. And then when, that, when, that, uh, when it's overturned in appeals court, we can still go after them, even though there's a constitutional law that bans us from have, facing double jeopardy. And that's what's gone on with Omar Bradley. And why did they pursue Omar Bradley? They made it very clear that they just didn't want him to run for mayor again. They made it very clear that if he would just stay out of politics, if he would just look the other way, if he would go along to get along, they would leave him alone. And now on Thursday, he has a trial starting. It's time for the crowd to bombard the DA's office with calls, with complaints, with emails. We need to, we need to make all of us uh, known, we need to let people know that they can't get away with this stuff. The rights are the heads of a drug cartel, according to these indictments. They need to stand trial, and the feds usually don't get this stuff wrong. So it's time for all of you to get behind this trial that's coming up, and let's let everybody that's involved in this know how dirty these cops are, these former corrupt cops are. And my understanding was that one of them fa flashed a badge and said that they were part of an undercover sting and tried to do some kind of bullshit with the feds on this, and that didn't fly. 
we need to make sure that they can't bullshit their way out of these charges. And we need to go after all the corrupt cops that have been involved in the cover-up of the murders of Tupac and Biggie. Who's with me? Let's make this, let's make some noise. Tupac fans, if you guys have ever wanted to help solve this case, now is the time to get out there and make your voice heard. Too many people have glossed over this. Too many people have allowed these guys to bully you into believing bullshit. No more bullshit, okay? We need to make this happen. We need to make this happen now. Write to these uh, to these U.S. attorneys that are trying this. Write to, let's let's let them know about all the crimes that these guys are good for. Okay, no more. We got to put an end to it. We got to stand for something now. Okay, who's with me?